Hi everyone, it's me, Krista. Welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before, if not, welcome for the very first time to my little art corner here on YouTube. Today I'm going to be doing something a little different. I've been painting larger pieces off camera and I've also been working on shows, so today's video is going to actually be kind of like a recollection of a series I did a long time ago. I did it in 2015. And hey, guess what? It's Asian horror inspired. Shocking! I know. If you've seen any of my other videos, you probably know that I love horror books, horror movies, horror anything basically, and I love making like scary art. For some reason that is just, oh, makes me so happy. This series was originally done for an art show in 2015. It was actually at a tattoo shop. Uh, there are a few pieces that aren't like part of this series because for that specific show, he wanted certain pieces that represented like his uh, gallery's mission and whatnot, like symbols that represented that. One was a sacred heart, so that one's not in here. One was a spiral, which that's in here. Yes, and I don't remember what the third thing was, because it was a while ago. This guy wanted us to do at least ten pieces, so yeah. I ended up doing almost forty total because for some reason I felt it was a challenge. Especially because the person running this also told me that I was not taking my art very seriously when I was painting every day after work. But that's a different story. That might be something later. We might talk about like annoying things that have happened <laughs> when dealing with certain people. <laughs> but I will say this, this is my second show. This gallery gave me quite a few opportunities, especially at the beginning. I'm still super grateful for that. So for this series, I decided to pick a theme and that theme was Asian horror. I also wanted to use colors but kind of minimize the palette. I still wanted them to be bright punchy colors but maybe not go in quite like a full-on rainbow bright situation like normal. Just kind of pull it back a little bit and use those specific colors to help evoke certain moods in the painting. Z Painting z. But yeah, that's basically just a little introduction for this. Uh, let's get on into it. These first three are all going to be inspired by the same thing. Junji Ito is a major, major inspiration for me. My first introduction to his type of horror was actually the Uzumaki movie, not the manga. I found out years and years later about the manga and bought it pretty much immediately. His drawing style is just amazing and so detailed and because of that detail it just makes it so much creepier. The gallery's mission statement that these pieces originally went into that included the spiral as part of whatever metaphor it was, I don't remember now. That actually was partially what led me into going with the theme of Asian horror because I knew I could fit it in with this idea. Some of these pieces are inspired by specific films, more are inspired by general ideas and themes and cliches that show up. And a few are going to focus on that kind of stringy, long-haired ghost type figure and the ghost hanging upside down. For these pieces with the green specifically, I wanted to use the green to be a more eerie feeling. The specific mixture of the green and the yellow and the red gives this kind of sickly, otherworldly feeling, at least to me, and it gives you a sense of unease and a feeling that, hey, something here isn't right, something's a little supernatural going on here. And I have a few third eyes because I like drawing third eyes. <laughs> I don't know why. This one is inspired by a specific scene in the film Shudder. I also like the representation of this weight of a haunting or of guilt. The representation of it being almost a physical heaviness that's always with you. 
for some reason that idea and that representation really gets to me. It sticks in my brain. That one with the red halo was actually rejected from some DeviantArt group for being inappropriate, which I still don't understand. It's very subtle. If you can figure it out, let me know. This one, I think it's supposed to be kind of like a kaiju thing. It's specifically the uh, one from The Host, which is an awesome, awesome monster movie that also has some underlying political metaphors to it. I liked using the red with the green because they're contrasting colors. And it's just, for some reason, I find this monster adorable. I don't know. <laughs> These next three are all vampire related ones, and they are all inspired by the two Vampire Hunter D films. Go figure. I'm not into very much anime, I'm kind of selective about the ones I like, but I really like Vampire Hunter D and Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust. They're so brutal. I also enjoy, especially in Bloodlust, Carmilla as a character because she represents that whole feminine fear or fear of femininity that is present in a lot of female vampire stories. Basically that female sexuality and sensuality is dangerous. <laughs> These next two are specifically inspired by the Ringu movies. I remember still the unsettling nature of her eyes in the video, Sadako's eyes, it still freaks me out because they're so inhuman. And I know, at least for me, I focus a lot on eyes to be able to figure out emotion. I love drawing eyes, so I think it was just extra unsettling for me because of how inhuman they look. With the green being used in certain pieces, as I saw it, it was supposed to represent an eerie, supernatural feeling. Red is supposed to be rage and wrath, especially in a spiritual form. This one here is inspired by a scene in Audition, which is still one of the freakiest movies I've ever seen in my life. Uh, there's something very, very unsettling about the main antagonist in that film. Don't want to give anything away too much, but if you haven't seen it, you don't mind a little bit of gore and unsettling stuff, watch it. And like I said, red represents anger. I also used yellows to mix in to intensify the brightness of those reds. And in some cases, I used greens as shadows as well. I love that one with that yellow top. I still am really satisfied with the uh, kind of almost see-through glistening nature that I got from that one. This series also helped me with facial expressions a lot when I'm drawing or painting people because of the amount of people I did. So I learned more about not only using color to enhance mood, but using the facial expressions to kind of express said mood. This ghostly figure in that red doorway was inspired by Cairo. If you want to hear more about that film and my thoughts on it, there was an Art Snacks unboxing where I did another piece inspired by that film. I'll link that in the description box for you. This one is about a medical fear of having to be put under anesthesia for surgery purposes, basically. I wanted to use hot and cold with the red and the blue to kind of enhance a menace and then a sense of peace. And the blue kind of also a sense of helplessness. Aww, another little vampire girl. She looks a little bit more innocent, though. This one is representative of the Juan films, the Grudge movies, and specifically Kayako and the violence of her death. Those movies really bother me on an emotional level because of the uh, family violence depicted, but also because of the stain of the haunting. Basically anyone who comes into any form of contact with that house and that original crime, it's just 
their whole life is infected. And I think it shows kind of how grief can infect a community, how it affects more than one human being. This one was inspired by one Miss Call, the original one. And uh, a big aspect of that movie is, I think it's actually supposed to be a parody of horror movies, which is kind of awesome. It does have a great twist to it. But one of the uh, calling cards to say of the uh, deaths is a candy, a red candy in the mouth. This one wasn't part of the show, but it's still inspired by Asian horror films. That's why I put it in here. This is my interpretation of Toshio from the Grudge movies. He's so cute. I didn't find him scary. He's a cute little boy that meows. For the blues, I wanted to use them as a way to encapsulate fear and a sense of melancholy and I guess a lack of control. Green is supposed to be eerie, red's supposed to be violent, blue's just supposed to be like sad, depressing, can't escape it, melancholy. How many other words for sad can I put in this video? I don't know why I associate the color blue with like fear, but it's there. It's in my brain that way. This is one of the few pieces I've ever done that uses pointillism. This one was inspired by Cairo, also known as Pulse. The ghosts in that film usually kind of come through computers, so I wanted to use pointillism as a way to depict pixelation in it. This one's kind of a ghostly figure with a third eye and kind of a fiery aura. I wanted to play with a more cartoony style for that one. Not that most of my pieces are super realistic, but for that specific one I wanted it to be more anime-y or more cartoony. This eye is inspired by another Junji Ito work called Tomie. If you've seen any of the films, specifically the first one, or read the manga, you might be able to figure out specifically where this eye one is from. I wanted to play with a little bit more color with this, and I think it's more representative of the style I settled on later, especially with like how I paint skin and all that good stuff. These next two paintings are of a <laughs> Persian cat from the horror film Hausa, which is a very surreal, very crazy 70s Japanese horror movie. It's very trippy and very funny, and I love this cat. But I love all cats, so loved it so much I did it twice. This one was inspired by Dark Water, little girl looking down into a well. I wanted to do yellow and red, red to kind of indicate malice, and the yellow was more because of some of the kind of grody surroundings that seem to be in a lot of horror movies in general. Usually not like the cleanest conditions. It makes you feel a little bit unease. Like Rust World and Silent Hill. Yes, I'm calling it Rust World. This one was also inspired by Audition. I wanted to use intense reds, oranges, yellows, and purples to give a sense of it being more of a psychedelic painting, especially with there being a needle, and to add a sense of unreality to it, and that possibly you're under the influence of whatever's in that needle. These next two are also inspired by Junji Ito's Tomie. Tomie is another character that represents the perceived danger of feminine sexuality. I wanted to use pinks to kind of enhance that sense of girliness and femininity. I also like the little smirks that I got on two of these female figures that just showed. Enjoy it. There's actually a conjoined women's face painting I did a couple years ago that was loosely inspired by some of the Tomie things. There was a period of time where 
I liked painting conjoined skulls and faces. Don't know why. But I did use one of the Tomie manga as kind of a reference point and then some photos of conjoined skulls to get that other painting figured out. If you want to see that one, let me know. I'll do another video maybe of some older paintings that don't really have much to do with each other and talk about the inspiration behind them. But only if you want it. Let me know in the comments down below. This is another one inspired by Haosu. There's an aunt ghosty character and there's a point where there's an eye in her mouth and I just thought it was hilarious and I wanted to paint it. I hope this video has given you guys a better idea of my thought process behind certain paintings. I don't always have one. 99% of the time I don't. I just do it. But with these there was an intention and I hope that this video is better to able to communicate share ideas I had for a series and share those ideas using actual words because words are hard, yo. Now let's get back to my face. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day or night to watch me ramble about art stuff. Yay! If you like this video, please hit that like button. If you want to see more videos like this or want to see me paint or do unboxing thingies or just slideshows of creepy paintings, hit that subscribe button. If you have any comments, questions, feelings, or concerns, let me know in that comment section down below. Now we're going to show you some of my patrons and other social media stuff. Yay! my face is back look at that thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day or night to watch this movie i do movie oh i look like a chubby christus from final fantasy air though my hair flips out more like selfie personality wise more like selfie too